Welcome to our show, Wine Business. I'm Roberta Prescott. I am at Ericsson Business Innovation Forum held in São Paulo. And I have here with me Sergio Quiroga, his head of Region Latin America at Ericsson. Sergio, I'd like, you, I'd like to start talking about the goal of Ericsson to reach 50% of market shares regarding LT. When do you think this target could be reached? Uh, well, yeah. We do have a goal to, uh, to keep the global market share we have and uh, naturally have that in Latin America. And um, so far, for every three connections of uh, LT to Afro Ericsson, and we want to, uh, to keep this goal, the initial race of LT in Latin America, we have been showing the same results globally. And now uh, we expect to keep that according to the time that we, we have, the, the deployments that we, we are going to have in 4G. And what does the region represent to Ericsson? Yeah, Latin America, it's amazing, but it's 10% of everything. It's 10% of revenues, it's 10% of subscribers in the case of the, the total subscribers, it's 10% of the broadband, it's, uh, so, uh, it's, it's 10% and I... I really would like to, to grow a little bit more. And carriers, Latin America carriers around the region are releasing who will be their providers for LTE. How Ericsson is positioned in this scenario and could you compare it to uh, Ericsson's competitors such as Huawei, Nakasimus Network, and Alcatel Lucent? Well, I don't know that much about the competition, but uh, the, the, as I said, the initial results are, are putting us in a position that we're increasing the market share that we have in, a, in 3G, 2G for sure, and in 4G we're in more than 50% so far. So the, the rest is divided between the competitors, like you said. I don't know exactly the market share of that. Great. And today uh, you present some interesting numbers regarding the growth of mo mobile broadband and mobile subscriber in Latin America. What do you think will push this growth in, uh, in I don't know, in the next five years, for example? Yeah, uh, we have global studies, we have global perspectives and trends and, and so on. And, uh, back in the year 2007, we have created a vision of the 50 billion connected devices or 50 billion connections. The, the 50 billion means 5 billion in Latin America and Caribbean. The 5 billion means 2 billion in Brazil. So today we could say that we are surrounding the 400 million connections in Brazil. So that's the vision of. Uh, Everything we, we, we have connected between machine to machine and so on. It means that we need to grow five times the connected devices. What is going to create this growth exactly? Everything that is surrounding the economy of the of uh, of the, the operators, everything that the operators are doing, everything that can be connectable, like uh, machines, the appliances like uh, cars, like buses, boats, luggage. Uh, uh, we just heard some examples of, uh, of uh, parking lots and uh, parking places that can be connected by broadband and uh, things, uh, uh, services that are connected to life quality like e-health, e-learning, okay, all the, the security. So all of it will converge to the growth of the mobile broadband. And we said that also that every time or every 10% that we grow in penetration of broadband in the country means that the economy will grow 1%. The GDP will grow 1%. That is studies that, that is not uh, Ericsson that is doing that, but uh, so it means, for instance, the projection for Brazil, the injection of capital and so on in, in, uh, in the growth of broadband. If we go to, to current 30% mobile broadband in Brazil to 60%, means that we go, going to have an injection in the economy of 175 billion US dollars in three years, if it happens in three years. Okay? So this is exactly the effect of 10% growth meaning 1% increase in GDP. And my next question is regarding Latin America.
America countries. Do you think, uh, besides Brazil or Mexico, uh, do you think uh, what countries would be pushed to this global uh, Hispanic growth? Well, I could say all. I want to say all. And, uh, and, uh, but uh, let's go to the, the countries that have real scale and so on. But the, don't forget the small ones like, like Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico started was what the pioneer in making 4G. Yeah? And uh, Colombia, for sure, with uh, more than uh, with 44 million possible subscribers, of course. And Chile, that is always a pioneer, early adopter of technology. This time was the first one in 3G, the first one in 3G. It's not the first one in 4G, unfortunately. But uh, for sure, Brazil, as we said, Mexico, naturally, in Central America, why not? So it's, it's a general effect. And, uh, and the first ones that organize the licensing, the frequencies, and so on, are the ones that are starting first. It's, it's very difficult, of course. Uh, because the, the, the 3G technology was not depreciated yet. So it's difficult. It's a wee massive, massive rollout where we, we are going to see just after 2018 and so on. But uh, the necessity is there. People want more and faster broadband. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Follow us at rcwireless.com.